Hi there everyone, my name is Dave West, I hope you're all doing well. So welcome back to the ultimate video test and this evening we're checking out the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. Now as with all ultimate video tests I leave all of the main camera specifications down in the description and I'll just run through some of the high level features throughout the video to help save you a bit of time. So we're starting off with the front facing camera and compared to the 40 megapixel unit in the S22 Ultra, this is now a 12 megapixel selfie camera. And this can record video at up to 4K at 60 frames per second. Now as with last year's S22 Ultra, you get the same great electronic image stabilization. And for a selfie camera, the image quality is really good. Now you do get an element of autofocus. So this helps with selfies. And it's also got optical image stabilization as well. So it rounds out a pretty good overall package for the selfie camera. And as with all Samsung handsets of old, it automatically adjusts all of the exposure and everything on the fly to get you the best image quality. Now the image stabilization, as always, is really good. If I just go for a quick run here, you can see that the the phone does a great job of keeping up with the rough footsteps and just smoothing out the footage as it goes along. Now, slightly more challenging conditions this evening. We're about an hour and an hour or so before sunset, so you've got these super long shadows that are created, plus the differences in light. So you can see I'm a bit more shadowy there, and as I turn around, you get the sun on my face, which really favours these kind of lenses because it really helps them out in these kind of conditions. And as with the S22 Ultra from last year, you also get 4K60 on the selfie camera with electronic image stabilization. And in this kind of nice lighting conditions, there's no discernible difference between the two frame rate outputs. The only difference you'll see with this is if you're in low light conditions, you get the added benefit of smoother video which makes it look a little bit more lifelike and realistic, which is cool. Now, as well as the 30 and 60 frames per second modes, you also get portrait video from the selfie camera. So this is nothing new for the Samsung S series range. But I think Samsung's implementation is actually one of the better ones. You get nicely detailed, sharp looking video with a really nice portrait blur effect behind. Now this can be adjusted, but as I found with pretty much all of these new flagship handsets, the default setting gets it just about right. Now the difference is for 2023 and the S23 Ultra is that the portrait video can be recorded at up to 4K at 30 frames per second rather than just the 1080 from last year. And it's nice to see that the electronic image stabilization is also applied to this mode as well. So as well as giving you nice, sharp, nice soft background and quite artistic looking video. If you notice the difference in the colors compared to the, the main mode, there's just a subtle difference which makes this just that little bit more pleasing to look at. All right, so moving around to the rear cameras. So we're starting off with the ultra wide camera and I'll just flick through all of the available lenses just to Give it a quick show and tell of what they are. So you've got this 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. You've got a brand new 200 megapixel sensor. And then following in the footsteps from the last two generations, we've got the 10 megapixel three times telephoto zoom. And then the 10 megapixel 10 times telephoto zoom as well. The good thing is, is that all of these lenses can be used at up to 4K at 60 frames per second. You get image stabilization on every single lens. And this also counts for HDR video, which can this year record at up to 60 frames per second. And again, I will do a separate video showing you what that looks like. So as you can see, the ultra wide camera, especially in these nice conditions, does a great job of rendering the scene nicely, nice colors. Not too boosty compared to the still photos on the S23 Ultra. And good image stabilization, as well as a nice wide field of view. Now you do get 
autofocus on the ultra wide camera. It's quite shallow compared to the main lens, but it does come in handy for photography. So you can use that as a, a macro lens to get some really nice close up shots of flowers and whatever else you want to take a close up photo of. So let's move to the, the main camera. Now again, the 200 megapixels isn't going to make a huge amount of difference for video because you're not using the whole 200 megapixels for this function. But nonetheless, you get a nice, consistent, pleasing look to the video. And if we test out the autofocus, just to see how that looks, you can see that it acts nice and fast and smooth at the same time. I notice it's a little bit slower than what you would expect. Don't forget this gigantic 200 megapixel lens. It's got a really shallow depth of field, so it just takes a little bit longer to focus, but it's a nice smooth mechanism for the focus, quite artistic looking. It's almost like a, a rack focus kind of look to the, the adjustment. But once it does get a lock on the subject, you can see the image is nice and sharp and makes everything look really good. Now, thankfully, the local farmer has left his horses out for us so we can utilize the zoom cameras to show you how good they are in these nice lighting conditions. Not so good in low light, but hopefully we'll get some upgrades next year with these zoom cameras. So if we start with the three times telephoto. So at 4K30, which is what we're recording at now, you can switch between all of the lenses and still get the same quality of video, more or less. If you look really closely, you can see images in the distance are slightly more broken up, a bit of over sharpening going on, but let's be honest, that's just been a bit picky, I think. To be able to get this kind of video with these lenses is a really good thing. Now we can also go up to 10 times zoom at 4K30. Have to be a bit more careful with the footsteps here. You can see even at 4K at 30 frames per second, you're still getting really nice, pleasing looking 4K images from this 10 times zoom camera. Now we can see right up into the distance there up on the mountain. And if you want to go that bit further, you can pinch all the way to 20 times zoom. So this is adding another 10 times digital zoom on top, which doesn't look too bad if I can keep myself still. And it's just to illustrate how far away I am from that in the distance, we go all the way back to the ultra wide camera. And those objects look literally miles away, I would say. As the crow flies, that's about four or five miles away up to that hill. I know because I've been there. Right, so that is the cameras at 4K at 30 frames per second. Let me know what you think down in the comments. So for your benefit, I hope this works. So this is portrait video from the rear camera. So this is using the 200 megapixel lens in video mode to give you this effect. Now, providing you get the right kind of distance to the subject, you get a really nice, pleasing looking image. And again, this works up to 4K at 30 frames per second in portrait mode. Now, I can't see myself at the moment, but you let me know what you think down in the comments of the quality of the portrait video from this rear lens setup. All right, so this is the three times telephoto camera at work then in the portrait option from the rear cameras. Now the good thing is that the phone will tell you when it's ready. It literally says ready in yellow text on the screen. And you can see you get a really nice depth of field on the subject. If you just look in the background there, got a nice foreground and it just rolls off nicely into the background to give this really pleasing 
portrait video effect. So you get video stabilization as well, but because it's using the zoom lens, you've got to be really careful with your footsteps in order to not make it look like a pile of rubbish. I'll just turn it on the side, and I don't want to get too close because Mama Horse is just off camera on the right hand side. But from where I'm standing, I think that looks really good indeed. But you let me know what you think down in the comments and I'll switch to 60 frames per second now and show you what that's all about. All right, so this is 4K at 60 frames per second then on the rear cameras. Now, unfortunately, even with the added power of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, which is powering the S23 series this year, you still can't switch lenses on the go whilst recording when at 4K 60. A little bit disappointing, I mean, it's not a deal breaker, let's be fair. But it would have been nice to have seen it given that the, the new, well, it's not new anymore, the Pixel 7 Pro allows you to do so. But hopefully Samsung will be able to add that in next year's S24 series or whatever it's going to be called. You never know with Samsung these days. But again, at 4K 60, you get a nice smooth video images with good stabilization. Just illustrate by walking around this, illustrate rather by walking around this tree, which I'm pretty sure wasn't here this time last year. I think that's been planted by the local farmer because they did cut off a lot of the surrounding ground you can see here is actually causing disease to the grass which was obviously dangerous for the wildlife so i think they planted this tree in its memory which is very nice of them to do but you can see hopefully uh, just by walking around it you can see the stabilization and hopefully you can see the detail that's on offer with the ultra wide camera So testing the close-up abilities of 4K60 with the main 200 megapixel camera. Now you can see the really shallow depth of field on this camera. It gives it almost like a 3D effect on the object closest to the lens. I can go a little bit further and you can see it gets loads of detail in the image. And the gentle sway, if I just give it a quick knock, you can see that the 60 FPS motion gives it a much more realistic and lifelike organic movement. So, moving to the scenery around, and hopefully you can see the benefit of the smoother motion. Just a quick pan left and right. Now, recording the video, there's no jitters, but obviously it might look a bit different when it's played back. But the S22 Ultra wasn't that bad last year, to be honest. A couple of little micro jitters, but nothing major. Now, somebody is bound to ask. There is a high bitrate option in the settings for the S23 Ultra this year. Now that's enabled by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset, which has the Snapdragon imaging processor, and that allows you to get much higher bitrate videos. Now I have switched it on. You'll have to take my word for it, but the difference between the two to the naked eye, with it switched on or off, is not really that distinct. But I wanted to make sure this looks its absolute best when it's uploaded to YouTube, so I've flicked on the high bitrate video option just to save as much as I can once YouTube has had its wicked way in the processing stage. But hopefully this will give you an idea of how the video looks at 4K 60 using the main camera. Okay, so here's the three times telephoto camera. Now at 4K 60, I was expecting it to or let's just zoom off the main lens, but it does actually seem to be using the three times telephoto camera, which is good. You should get that sort of telltale over sharpening that you can sometimes see when phones cropping off their main sensor to get you the 60 frames per second video. Sometimes it's because the lens is just not fast enough. If 
hardware is a bit inferior so the manufacturer will just crop off the main lens to get the 60 fps video but not here it actually seems to be really good now even on walking you can see that although it's a bit, bit sway now and again I've actually managed to get all this far and it hasn't looked like a load of rubbish which is cool so we're gonna get closer now to that horse with a 10 times lens all right so here's the 10 times zoom camera uh, 4k 60 and hopefully this little baby horse grazing and the cars just going past in the background give you an idea of the smoother movement and even the detail on the horse's tail and the horse's mane actually looks really good and again focusing on objects in the distance looking good again no real evidence of like so much over sharpening which would suggest it's cropping from the main lens it is actually being recorded by the 10 times zoom camera which is awesome so that is everything up to 10 times zoom from the s23 ultra and 4k 60. Okay, so also new for the S23 Ultra. It's not a new feature, but it's a new kind of function, if you like, for this feature. So this is the super stable video mode. Now, last year it could do 4K, but it looked terrible. It looked really sort of grainy video and it just didn't look very appealing at all. But thankfully this year it's had a bit of an upgrade. Now you can record it up to 4K 60 now, sorry, 1440p 60, I beg your pardon. It says QHD 60, so that's not 4K, it's 1440p. But it still looks really good, in my opinion. Massive improvement from last year's really crummy looking, almost 720p-ish video. Now, if I go for a quick run just to illustrate the stabilization, And hopefully you can see how well the stabilization works in this super stable mode. And here's the main camera at 1440p 60. It looks really decent in my opinion. And even if I just turn the phone to its side and walk side on, Hopefully it should give you an idea of just how stable it can keep the video even when I'm doing lateral movement. Cool. All right, so that's everything from the Galaxy S23 Ultra in daytime conditions in its standard dynamic range video format options. Definitely much more complete this year. It does pretty much everything now up to 4K60, which is great, including HDR. And don't forget, I will put a clip up just to illustrate that and I will tag it at the end of the video. But if you've got any comments or questions about anything that you've seen in this video, then please leave those down in the comments and I will get back to you as soon as possible. And don't forget, if you're new around here, then please do consider subscribing. So there's more videos like this coming on the channel very, very soon. But for now, this has been my ultimate video test for the Galaxy S23 Ultra. My name is Dave West and I'll catch you guys later.